Hey, Mimo from Mimotronics Effects here. Uh, today we're going to be introducing the Protus One Mini Guitar Effects Development Board. Uh, this was an offshoot to the larger um, Protus One Development Board. This guy, which is which has more features obviously than this one, is a little bit bigger. But this one is meant to be a DIY kit, um, so you can build it at home and build your guitar effects right away. Um, so we're going to be going into the features of it. We're not going to be building a circuit with it just yet in this video, but possibly in future videos um, we'll be able to build some circuits with it. But in the meantime, let's go over its features. So there are two pieces of equipment that come optional with the Protus One Mini. There are these male-to-male -male jumper wires come in a kit, and this 18-volt DC center negative power supply. Um, if you already have these jumper wires, it makes sense to not have to buy them from me, but um, you know they're there if you need them. And this 18 volt DC power supply for friends outside of the U.S. This will not work, so do not purchase this if you're from outside um, of North America. However, uh, if you are in within North America, if you already have an 18 volt DC power supply center negative, um, then it should be able to work as long as it meets the current specs of the pedals that you're going to build. Um, if you don't have one, then this makes sense to also purchase this with the Mini. Okay, so the first thing we're going to show is the, uh, the power supply area. So here's our 18 volt power adapter, and you can know it's on because the bypass light turned on. Um, so 18 volts coming in, and you also have it right there, 18 volts. Um, the first thing I want to show you though are these enable pins over here. So in the top here, this is your enable for your 12 volt line. Right below that is your enable for your 9 volt line. And that's determined by whether or not you have this shunt across these two pins here. Also right below that you have your inverter area. So this is a 3 pin area. And your shunt is a 2 pin shunt and depending on what side it's on, is which inverted um, power line you are enabling. So if it's on the right hand side, the negative 12 volt line is enabled, and if it's on the left hand side, the negative 9 volt line is enabled. If we move to the right here, we'll see the reference select area, and uh, this basically just chooses which bias voltage you want. In, in case you don't want to build it on the breadboard over here, uh, we have just like this bias circuit that we use. So uh, over here you have your 4.5 volt line, which is half of the, your 9 volt line. Um, you've got your 6 volt line, which is half of your 12 volt line. And you've got the 9 volt bias, which is half of your 18 volt bias, if you're building a circuit with 18 volts on it. Over here, on these headers here, you'll see that there are two access points for each voltage. So down here you have a plus 18 volt, plus 12 volt, plus 9 volt, and then you have your ground your reference, which comes from this selection up here, and your inverted line, which comes from this selection up here. And that's mimicked or mirrored on the top here. So you have two different access points for your power. So the next feature that I want to go through is the potentiometer interface. Uh, we have four onboard potentiometers, 1K, 10K, 100K, and one megohm and these are all linear potentiometers and then we have also these two external potentiometers that you can port over from off the board. Each of these potentiometer stations ha are equipped with this configuration area where you can use these shunts to sort of configure um, which configuration you want. So say for example you need pin one of this potentiometer shorted this would be that configuration for that. See how this shunt is across the first pin of this potentiometer and the, uh, the pins on the outsides here are ground, so you're actually shorting this pin to ground using that configuration. With this configuration, you're shorting the uh, pin 1 and 2 of this potentiometer. And with this configuration, you're not doing anything. You're just kind of using each potentiometer pin um, as it stands. And it's pretty easy to know which one you're using because of this icon underneath here. The middle one is the wiper, and then your A and B, or I'm sorry, your A and C pins are on the outside. And so now I want to show you guys how to use the input and output jacks on here. We're going to input our guitar into the input jack, which is on this side, and we're going to put the uh, we're going to plug in the amp to the output jack on this side. Right now we're bypassed, and I have my guitar plugged in, and you should be able to hear that through the amp, just like that. 
okay? So we're bypassed, our light's off. We're gonna, we're gonna send it through the circuit, or what would be the circuit. And you can see that the guitar is not going through because we're not bypassed. We're, we should be going through some sort of circuit and then out through the output. So you can see on the uh, right hand side of the board, we have an IO header here and it's, it says in tip, in ring, the T stands for tip and the R stands for ring. And then you have the output tip and the output ring. So you can interface with the input or the output on one side of the board. If I turn your attention to the left hand side of the board, we have a similar we have a similar thing going on on this side, where we have an input tip, input ring, and an output tip and an output ring. So we can also interface with the input on the left-hand side of the board, even though we're near the output jack. We can also reference, we can also interface with it on this side. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect. I'm going to connect the input tip with the output tip on this side of the board using a male-to-male. -male jumper wire. So if I just do this, we're going to connect the input tip to the output tip. And what's that? This is the guitar signal. So now we've effectively, this is technically our, this is technically right now our guitar pedal circuit. And if we were to bypass it, it's okay because, well, it's bypassed now. So the three main features we just went over were the, uh, the power section, the potentiometer interface section, as well as the, uh, how the input and output works. Um, the, there's some other auxiliary features here. You've got these three LED, or four rather LEDs uh, that are interfaced through this header here. And you've got these two switches up here that are interfaced through this header over here. Um, each of these LEDs is current limited by a 1K ohm resistor. And uh, you also have this auxiliary jack down here, which is interfaced through this tip and ring uh, header down here, and this can be used for whatever you want it to to use it for. I guess you've got um you can do stereo out, you can do you can do expression pedal, CV input, um, all sorts of different things, TRS MIDI. You know the, the list is endless. Um, so those are the features on the Protus One Mini.